Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to Starseed Radio Academy, empowering Starseed to better serve the planet. Welcome to Starseed Radio Academy. It's Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024, and I'm your host, Arielle Taylor, with my co-host, Anastasia. We are happy to welcome Sandra Recchioni back to our show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sandra was born with the gift of seership and is a clairvoyant transmedium, as well as a divine dragon energy healer and flower and gem essence creator and practitioner a diversified and universal spiritual advisor for our changing times. Her clairvoyant gifts and mediumship connected her to the angelic realm and Archangel Michael, her guide, who has assisted her as her spiritual team leader throughout this lifetime. Sandra combines flower and gem essences for you and creates a custom essence and aura spray designed especially for your current needs. These flower and crystal remedies can assist in healing trauma, depression, anxiety, loss, psychic attacks, and symptoms associated with the current planetary and cosmic energies known as ascension symptoms. Many ancient civilizations used flower essences in their natural remedy, as did the Essenes, through the practice of the Mirafor lineage, of which Mary Magdalene was a part. You can learn more about the sacred oils and flowers and resins used by the Mirafor priestesses during this most auspicious time in history. Today, Sandra will be sharing some information about the movement that was um, thriving in that area and how Mary Magdalene's story intertwines with Yeshua and the Essenes. We'll delve into how this movement shaped her life and teachings and how it continues to inspire us. Sandra will share some special flower essences and space and aura sprays that are available in her shop, each carefully crafted to carry the unique frequency and energy of Mary Magdalene. These products are designed to help you connect with her healing and transformative power. You can discover the enduring legacy of Mary Magdalene and the spiritual tools that can bring her energy into your everyday life. And you can visit her uh, Sandra's website, which is Starseed Essence Shop, S H O P P E dot com. At the top of the show, it's Anastasia's Starseed News, bringing topics of interest and hope to Starseeds not heard in the mainstream. And uh, we'd like to thank Kathy and Jada for hosting the switchboard tonight for those who may have a question or comment. If you are an astrologer and are ready to learn advanced galactic astrology, please email me, ariel at starseedhotline.com. Lavendar and I are gathering a small group of qualified people to learn the Starseed Codes, and this will take place in October. Our main website is starseedhotline.com, where the Stage 1 Starseed confirmations are based on Lavendar's discovery of star markings and your natal astrological chart, and the Stage 2 session is a one-on-one Zoom session. And we also have a daily transit service to help you navigate your life and mission with greater success, even if you know little or nothing about astrology. And remember, if you have a birthday coming up, you're going to get a window of 10 hours of power. You can find out exactly when that happens by requesting your solar return timing. And you can do that a week or two before your birthday. But if you want a reading of that chart, make it about a month or two before your birthday. So first up tonight, I would like to introduce Anastasia with her uplifting Starseed News. Well, hi, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Great to be with you. Hi there. Happy to be here. Always love to hear your beautiful voice. Well, let's get into the news. We have some early human evidence. This is pretty fascinating. Scientists have recently dug up some fossilized bones of a two-ton, heavily armored, grass-eating armadillo. 
They found it what? near a riverbank in Argentina. But they found something even more fascinating than the remains of this enormous glyptodont. On the bones, they found the type of cutting marks that were not inflicted by other animals, but by stone tools in the process of primitive butchering. What makes this so interesting is that this would put human presence in that area at 21,000 years ago, 5,000 years before people were thought to have settled in the Americas, according to most estimates. 21,000 years ago, people wow. in Argentina... Wow, that's a long time. Amazing. Stone tools. Wow. Well, this is a humorous story, I think. <laughs> a French cyclist has been fined money, dollars and cents, uh, for unseemly or inappropriate behavior. What did he do? Well, he pulled over while competing in the Tour de France so that he could kiss his wife. He was in stage seven of the epic endurance test passed through the cyclist's home region, and his family and friends had flocked to the roadside to cheer him on. If you've ever watched bike races, you can just visualize this. He stopped in the middle of the race to kiss his wife. He has since offered a playful apology online. He said, I'm sorry for having damaged the image of the sport, but I would pay $223 every day to relive that once-in-a-lifetime moment of kissing my wife during a race. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was worth the $223 fine, and he would do it again. <laughs> uh, he's quite romantic. Well, we just passed the 55th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. It's pretty timely because the researchers have just confirmed the location of a moon cave. We've talked about that before on the show. They say it could be a future base for lunar explorers. And it's oddly, it's not far from where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed way back in 1969. In a new study, scientists have written that the underground cavity, measuring at least 10 yards deep, is a promising site for a lunar base as it offers shelter from the harsh environment and could support long-term human exploration of the moon. Ten yards isn't very deep, but thats <laughs> I guess they'll take what they can get. The study's author said in a statement, these caves have been hypothesized for over 50 years, but this is the very first time that we've ever uh, proven their existence. A moon cave, that's cool. What are we going to do if they find moon bears? I don't know. <laughs> but no telling, no telling what's inside there. That's pretty amazing, really. Just never think about having moons, uh, caves on the moon, so that's kind of cool. Well, have you ever felt like you were sleeping when you were awake? Sometimes I'm talking to people, it doesn't say much for how interesting I am, but you sense that they might be going to sleep when you're talking. Oh, I hope not right now, not while I'm reading the news, everybody. Don't go to sleep. Well, for the first time, scientists have discovered that a small region of our brain shuts down to take microsecond-long naps while we're fully awake. What's more, these same areas flicker. They flicker awake while we're sleeping. These brand-new findings could offer pivotal insights into neurodevelopmental and neurodegenerative diseases, which are linked to sleep dysregulation. And until now, sleeping and awake states have been defined by overall brainwave patterns. You know, the alpha, beta, and theta waves when we're awake, and delta when we're not. So these flicker anomalies just discovered are challenging what we so far understood about these distinct sleeping-waking states of consciousness. It's always finding something new. So sleeping when awake. We're all doing it. We just may not know that we're doing it. <laughs> well, you know, I've often thought over the last number of years, five, six years, about water and crops and with the uh, the droughts in the West and uh, people just really having a difficult time having enough water and all over the world. Well, it's a, it's a worry for the planet as to how we're going to grow enough food when water is an issue. So watering and fertilizing crops to provide enough food for a changing world is a major challenge right now. And scientists at the University of Texas at Austin have developed something they call smart soil. They tell us this will keep plants better hydrated and provide a controlled release of nutrients. Plants that grow in their special hydrogel soil showed a 138% boost to their stem strength and their stem length compared to the control group. That's a lot. And importantly, the hydrogel-grown plants achieved this even while requiring 
40% less water. Now, the global water scarcity coupled with a growing population has an immediate impact on food security, and this new class of hydrogels will offer solutions to meet the pressing needs of water scarcity and efficient nutrient uptake in modern sustainable agriculture. It's a solution, a possible solution. Well, i got to love some of these northern countries. They are very innovative and progressive. Fifty years ago, Sweden became the first country in the world to offer paid parental leave to mothers and fathers. Well, now this Nordic nation of Sweden is trailblazing another unparalleled policy. They're allowing grandparents to get paid for taking care of their grandchildren. Under the new legislation, parents can transfer a portion of their paid parental leave to other caretakers, such as their parents, for the first year of their child's life, and they can do up to 90 days of transfer for care. So, wow. I mean, this is acknowledging the larger family and the needs of parents in caring for their children, which is pretty nice. Well, leave it to Paris. Leave it to the French. With less than two weeks to go until the Paris Olympics and events are scheduled to take place in the river, a question is hanging over the games. Will the Seine River be clean enough for athletes to swim in? Everybody's wondered. For a reason. Well, as it turns out, the short answer will be yes, provided that it doesn't rain too much immediately before or during the game. Now, how do we know that it's safe? Well, the mayor of Paris decided to prove it. Everybody's worried about it, so the mayor, a woman, took a dip. She jumped in and swam in the long, polluted Seine River to show that Paris's river is clean and safe. The city spent over a billion dollars trying to calm pollution fears, despite the fact that it has been absolutely illegal to swim in Paris's most famous river for more than 100 years due to the dirtiness of the water. So yeah. all these athletes lined up for the Olympics are worried about getting in the water, and Paris has said it's been over a billion dollars, actually a billion and a half, to try to get people to <laughs> persuade people it's okay to swim in the river, so they tossed their mayor in, and she did an example swim for everybody to say, hey, it's safe, come on in. <laughs> so, wow, really? More than 100 years, it's been illegal to even put your toe in that water because it's been so dirty. Well, good for them. I'm glad they're cleaning it up. Okay, make no bones about it. A nearly complete stegosaurus skeleton has just sold at Sotheby's in New York for a record $44.6 million, the most ever paid for a fossil at auction. Hailed by Sotheby's as the most complete and best-preserved stegosaurus specimen of its size ever discovered, the dinosaur, which they nicknamed Apex, was expected to fetch, fetch between 4 and $6 million U.S. before the fees. But once the sale began, the price just snowballed from a flurry of telephone bidders that got in on the auction. Once the numbers had reached into the eight figures, gasps and clapping could be heard throughout the showroom. And we can imagine, if we know the story, which I'm going to tell you, that there was some cheering back in Colorado where Apex was originally discovered by a man on his 45th birthday on his own land. And because it was his property where the discovery was made, He's entitled to do with this stegosaurus as he pleases, including making a fortune at Sotheby's, which he's just done. Oh, wow. $44.6 million. The dinosaur lived between $146 million and $161 million, million years ago in the late Jurassic period. It measures 11 feet tall and 27 feet long from nose to tail. It's 30% larger than the most complete stegosaurus on public display, housed in the Natural Museum in London. So this price they paid for this dinosaur is above all other record holders, which in 1997 they sold this Tyrannosaurus for $8.4 million. And then four years ago, inflation I suppose, Christie's sold the T-Rex for $31.8 million. But now we've topped it at forty-four point six. That would wow. be a pretty fun thing to find in your backyard. <laughs> yeah. I bet he doesn't live there anymore. What do you want to bet? He's probably bought himself a million-dollar house in California. I don't know. Anyway, there it is. The guy's rich, and it's a pretty fine uh, specimen of a dinosaur. They showed it on the net. It's magnificent. 
All right. Well, you know, we have a lot of people in this world. I certainly have noticed it. I'm old enough to see how much population has grown. It used to be you get on the interstate and go from uh, California to New York, and there was lots of room and not much traffic. <laughs> that is no longer the case. Um, growing from 8.2 billion people now in 2024, the global population is set to peak at 10.3 billion before it begins to decline by 2084. Now, that's 20 years earlier than they estimated two years ago. And this is according to the United Nations Biennial Population Report. Now, changes in population growth and fertility rates are closely tracked because they have major social and economic implications around the world. The number of people on Earth also has an impact on the planet itself, they tell us, affecting rates of consumption, energy use, industrial production, and, of course, the availability of resources. Analysts contribute the earlier peak to a broad decline in the number of children a woman will birth on average. Worldwide, that figure has dropped from 3.5 to 2.5 in 30 years because, you know, it was closer to seven children prior to the Industrial Revolution. When I grew up, I had a friend who had 21 siblings. His oh mother birthed God. 22 children. Truly, she was about oh four foot nine, little tiny woman with snow white hair, had 22 babies. <laughs> of course, that stands out as an, uh, an enormous uh, exception. But still, many years ago, people used to have many more children, but no more. Now, experts tell us that women's empowerment, the increased rate of successful births, and rising child rearing costs have contributed to dropping fertility rates. Dem- demographers theorize that developed countries need a fertility rate of 2.1 children per woman. Somebody gets paid to figure this out. Uh, 2.1 children per woman to keep the population constant. More than half of all countries have a rate below 2.1, including most of Europe, the U.S., Japan, China, and Russia. So there you have it. In the year 2084, they tell us it's going to start, start to slide downward. Okay, well, this is an amazing, uh, this is cool. I wish it could be done for every person that goes to college. I, actually, I defy anybody to tell me why it can't be done. Because it can be done. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about starting in the fall semester. Paying tuition is going to be one less thing for students to worry about. For medical students at John Hopkins University, anyway. The good news comes thanks to businessman Michael Bloomberg's organization which has donated $1 billion to cover tuition for the medical students at John Hopkins University. Great. Now, all you billionaires, let's just chip in and uh, every, let's take in the, get into the endowment fund and let's give everybody free tuition, please. Education might do well to not be a business. But here's a case where somebody has donated a billion bucks for education. That is a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go back in history for a minute. Some of you might not relate to this, but it's sort of an interesting twist. Particularly at a time in the country when uh, things are rather iffy in many ways. You may remember the story from a school history lesson. In April 1775, British soldiers met with colonial militiamen in Massachusetts. And somebody either tripped over their shoelace or got an itchy trigger finger or something because they fired a shot. And that shot resulted in the battles of Lexington and Concord, and thus the start of the American Revolution. More than half a century later, poet Ralph Waldo Emerson would famously call the first firing the shot heard round the world. Famous quote, the shot heard round the world. Now let's come to the present. Archaeologists of the National Park Service recently found five musket balls at Minuteman National Historical Park in Concord. And analysis of these artifacts indicates that these were the ones that were fired during that world-changing event. What do you think about that? That's pretty remarkable. Now we find the bullets, or the musket balls, that started the Revolutionary War. Well, did you know, oh, I know you don't know this one. I would put money on it, everybody. I'll bet any one of you out there. How many of you out there know that hippopotamuses can fly? 
Now, you know, we've heard that pigs don't fly. We never thought hippos would fly, but they do. Hippopotamuses fly. Right. True. I'm not kidding. They do so momentarily. When hippos get moving, all four feet leave the ground for about 15% of their stride cycles. This is according to researchers at Britain's Royal Veterinary College. <laughs> These guys have really good jobs, don't they? I mean, wow, they get paid to figure this out. <laughs> anyway, while three-tenths of a second in the air may not sound impressive, please keep in mind that hippos weigh up to 2.2 tons. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations to the hippos. They can lift 2.2 tons completely off the ground in three-tenths of a second. They fly. There you go. Wow. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great party, you know, good conversation piece. All right. Well, a new study suggests that beneficial uh, bacteria can assist in the control of weight. They say that specific gut bacteria can trigger compulsive eating and obesity. Some little buggy inside is making you eat things you shouldn't. Researchers at a university in Spain have identified bacteria linked to food addiction in humans and in mice, as well as the beneficial bacteria that will prevent it. They tell us this discovery opens the way to developing uh, potential new treatments for obesity-related behaviors that currently lack any effective therapeutic approaches. Well, bring it on. Tell us what they are. (laughs) What are the bad bugs and what are the good ones? I'll keep you abreast. When I find out more about this, I'll let you all know. Probably a lot of our probiotics contain that, but I don't know for sure. I mean, they didn't mention that. It was a rather short article. Um, but it would be like to know what we, be good to know what we ought to be taking. Well, from our weird desk, strange but true. Are you ready for this? Okay. Yeah. A man has been caught trying to smuggle 104 live snakes into mainland China by cramming them into his trousers according to China's customs authority. A guy stuffed his britches with 104 living snakes. The unnamed... I I don't hear anything. You're stunned, aren't you, Ariel? Yeah. (laughs) That's shocking. The unnamed traveler was stopped by customs officials as he sought to slip away from Hong Kong and sneak the snakes across the border into China. (laughs) Was he insane? Uh, There you go. There you have it. That's from our weird desk, strange but true. <laughs> Just stuff your britches with 104 live snakes and try to get them across the border. Why not? <laughs> and from the same desk, from the weird desk, we have another story. It's a mugs game at Tesla's German car factory. Among the myriad workplace issues and worker strife at Tesla's Gigafactory in Germany, where they make cars, one of the most contentious subjects for management is... The 65,000 missing coffee mugs. I'll let that sink in for a minute. (laughs) 65,000 missing coffee mugs. According to a German newspaper, there has been heated staff meetings, otherwise filled normally with safety and pay concerns, but now a Tesla plant manager is infuriated by the tens of thousands of coffee mugs that he said have gone missing from the factory. Reportedly, the plant manager said, we have bought 65,000 coffee mugs since we started production here. 65,000. Statistically speaking, each of you have already got five IKEA coffee cups at home. The manager was scolding the Tesla factory workers. They were taking the cups home. Additionally, he said he was totally fed up. I'm really tired of approving orders to buy more coffee cups. After several delays to its opening, the Gigafactory began operating a couple years ago and has faced an abundance of headaches ever since. And now management is having to deal with the coffee cup calamity on top of it. Now, IKEA has not commented on this matter, but is no doubt delighted by its miraculously enormous profit from selling 65,000 coffee cups. But of all of the controversies and mess-ups that have taken place at Tesla, they say this might be the strangest because it's not just mugs. Due to the disappearance of cutlery from the small kitchens at the plant, they no longer provide forks and spoons. And they are now introducing recyclable cups. So here's the deal. 
I figure Tesla in his generosity, I mean, I mean Tesla in their generosity, you know, provided employees with porcelain coffee cups and nice flatware. But I guess everybody was just taking it all home. So hmm. now they have to use plastic and paper, and that's the end of that. Oh, God. Oh. All right. Well, here's what Reba McIntyre had to say. She said, to succeed in life, you need three things. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's great. Bless her heart. She's so cute. So everybody, let's get a hold of a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone, and we'll all be better successful. That's great. I love it. Uh, From my heart to each one of you, (laughs) have a beautiful couple of weeks, everybody. Thank you, Ariel. I love being with you. Oh, thanks so much for the news, Anastasia, and we'll talk to you in two weeks. You bet. Good night. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good night. Wow. <laughs> that just made me kind of laugh. Okay. Well, Sandra, welcome to the show. Nice to have you back. Hi, Ariel. So nice to be back. It's been a while, so nice to hear your voice. And thanks for having me again. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. Um, your your most recent um, YouTube video on this subject of Mary Magdalene, the scenes, uh, is, is really in-depth, um, and we want to hear more about that. So um, just to kick off, just in case anyone has not heard you um, or any of the episodes that you've been on, um, with our show, just uh, tell us a little bit about how you um, got into um, what you do. Well, it's been my uh, lifelong quest, it seems, because um, since I was a young girl, um, prepubescent, I had an encounter with a being that, uh, for me at the time, uh, was an angel. And uh, that experience kind of was a catalyst for me to go on this quest of searching for my truth and my knowing. And uh, on that path, I discovered many different religious practices, spiritual practices, and um, ancient healing remedies. And so here we are, uh, almost a half a century later, um, and I was lucky enough to have and had an encounter with the Master Melchizedek, which catapulted me as a reverend in the Order of Melchizedek. And then from then on, it's just been um, connection with the avatars, with the angelic realm. I uh, help people, um, healing them with the flower remedies. So kind of a universal healer because I really don't know what is going to happen next. <laughs> and I don't know <laughs> what... When I do a healing session, um, until I'm there with the person, I don't have anything planned. It just kind of comes all at the same time when when we connect. So, um, yeah, so all those experiences led me to the creation of Starseed Essences, which is a co-creation with nature, with the flower and elemental kingdom, the gems and the essences, the minerals, and uh, the avatars who... Uh, chime in and help me create these these wonderful soul remedies is what I call them because they awaken our soul and our spirit and and help us get back on track and realign our our mission on here on earth that we all have. So, um, do you do you do a, like a um, uh, a meditation? where this information comes to you or do you call you know uh any you know any member of your team as you call it and i know you've worked with many avatars including um uh, saint germain and and you work with archangel michael and and also you know mary magdalene and yeshua also avatars and when so when you um do you have like a regular um, practice where you you go into meditation or you you go into your 
you know, your crack between the worlds and and receive this information? Very easy. Um, before my my meeting or my session with someone, I do breathing exercises, and that really just puts us in a in that zero point zero place that I go to, which is the crack between the worlds, and whatever is ready, whatever that person needs that is coming through, I basically make a request to their higher self to connect with my higher self. And, and I ask the masters and the angels to build an antikorana of light between me and that person that is protected and that is a pure 100% uh, source light and for the best uh, outcome for that individual and what they need at the present time. And with that simple request and with the approval, of, of obviously, of the person I'm doing the session with, it's amazing what comes through. Um, it could be a, a master, an avatar that has a message for the person. Um, it could be an elemental. It could be a galactic being. I've had all sorts of, of beings come through. Uh, but they mostly come through for the person that is doing the healing session. And then they'll kind of guide me and tell me what the person needs. So I basically channel for them from the kingdom of the avatars um, or the angels. Um, and the... The ships sometimes, they come into town as well and have a message for their starseeds. Well, so you've got many different um, sources, and it and it kind of depends on the person that you're working with as to, you know, who steps forward or how many step forward, you know, with the information that you need to help that person. Right, and what they're able to receive at that time. Some of them may not be ready for uh, too much. Um, we don't want to short circuit. So it's whatever is needed, and if healing is needed, um, the elementals come through and the flower essences will come through and they'll kind of say, hey, you know, she needs a little bit of rescue me in her world. <laughs> or <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know, so I kind of, it's amazing how it happens, Ariel. It's just like a... The same way you would perceive an avatar, you perceive the flower in your mind. And before you know it, you don't even look up the meaning. You just look it up after, and it's exactly what the person needs. It's magical. Wow. Wow. Well, you've really, you've really got this um, uh, tuned up and, you know, honed in on, on, the, on the process that you use. And, um, and how... When did you start with with the um, with the flower essences? Well, the flower essences was my own healing journey back in uh, before COVID in 2019. Um, I had reached that place that some of us get to where we're not moving and we're kind of stagnant. And um, I knew that there was something more that I needed. I was already working with the crystals and. I had um, kind of dabbled in ointments and, and remedies and, and stuff like that and oils, and but very amateurly. And I was guided through one of my guides to the Flower Essence Diploma class. It was a big commitment. It was a 24-month commitment to do the course, and it was time-consuming, and it was basically I had to take a class like we all do when we go to school, and um, I didn't want to do it. I rationalized myself out of it. And then something just took my hand and hit the button and said, oh, yeah, you're doing this. And that's what started, that started my healing journey with the flowers. As I did the course, we try the, the essences and we learn about them and, and we take them ourselves to feel the difference and then we write about it. So it was very in-depth and it's a very deep transformation. And... When I was done after the 24 months and I graduated, I was healed for that moment. It's always an onion that we're appealing and we need more healing on different levels. But for that moment, I was healed to the point where I was able to pull in all my masterships and be able to go to Quest because when I went to Quest, I was healed and I had already started my essences. Um, so it kind of... 
healing is like a, a phoenix rising. And um, I had my, you know, my kundalini and all that stuff started moving inside of me, and it's just fire. And you'd be surprised that when you align yourself energetically, when you heal your energy body, how everything dissipates and you're able to see clearly what you're supposed to be doing, and, and it just flows. You don't, the path of least resistance is what makes everything come to you naturally, through natural state. And it's wonderful, and it's it's uh, very um, uh, it's freedom to be able to feel that it's like you've been released from those shackles and that baggage that weighs us all down from birth until the end. We're weighed down by by trauma and past hurts and resentments. And when we learn to forgive and have compassion and open up our hearts to that cosmic love, everything dissipates. And you're able to help others find that peace as well. So, and what um, you mentioned um, uh, dealing with current planetary and cosmic energies that are known as ascension symptoms. What are some of those symptoms that you're aware of? Well, in the last. Um, Ten years, I've been going through ascension uh, symptoms, and I didn't know what they were. Um, They start off uh, more like insomnia, uh, the urge to eat chocolate, loss of appetite. Um, You don't feel the same around the people you used to be around before. Almost like a shedding of the skin um, in a snake. You're, You're letting go and you're shedding. And when those Ascension symptoms comes, they're due to the planetary changes and the astrology in our lives, in our own um, astrology, and it's kind of like a cosmic clock that will click. And like Lavender says, the blood crystals start to pop, but you also have symptoms with that. You'll have flu-like symptoms, um, gastro symptoms, uh, all of that because of that stuck energy that's trying to be released because we are changing from carbon to crystalline. That is the goal of our light body to come in, whether it's in our lifetime or in future generations. Um, That's what we're trying to achieve is that crystalline structure around our energy bodies. And the stagnant energy that we encounter in life and food and the pollution in the air and the water just weighs us down like heavy metals, which explains why we need to clear out the heavy metals in our body. And once you um, lighten up your energies, you're moving towards that accelerated God particle that puts us and catapults us into the higher dimensions. Wow. And still be in the and still be in the material world in the physical world, but we're living in through our higher self, no longer we're living through the ego. So it's a it's a big <laughs> transformation for for us and for soul maturity to, to come in and for us to realize what we're here to do and how we've been programmed and how everything that is around us is really just an illusion. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the that's the big one. It's like almost all. I mean, the third dimension is 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 an illusion of of what we think it to be of our perception. Exactly so, the uh, polarity. Yeah, yeah, the, and the duality. It's it's something that I think affects everyone in a in a different way, but it affects certainly all star seeds and um, and people that might be conscious enough to, you know, ask questions and not just accept whatever they're being told or fed or programmed with. Well, how many times do you go to the doctor with symptoms and they don't find anything? They don't, there's nothing wrong with you. And a lot of that has to do with the ascension symptoms that are energetic symptoms from our energy bodies, our subtle, our mental, our astral bodies. When we go out at night in our sleep state, all of that 
bring it comes into the physical body when we wake up the next morning and it kind of rocks our world a little bit so it's an adjustment that we make energetically and with the solar flares coming in and all of the earth changes Nature is here to help us go through those changes. And that's why the elementals and the gemstones are coming alive. And this renaissance of vibrational healing is starting to be more popular and people are going to different alternative healings versus the traditional uh, medicine that they've had for 100 years. Yeah. Yeah. So... um Tell us uh, the the story of how you uh, recently connected um, with with Mary Magdalene and and the information that came through, especially about her lineage. Uh, tell us about the Essenes. Well, this, who were they? Well, um, the this it's a soul collective that was around uh, in 2000 BCE and. They were basically a, a sect of the the Jewish sect, a branch of those traditions. And um, they were more open, the Essenes, and they lived in their own communities. And a lot of them were healers, were herbalists, worked with the oils. And a lot of them learned these traditions from the Egyptian temples. So they say that the Egyptians taught the Essenes. And so all of those traditions from the Isis temples that Mary and Mary Magdalene were a part of, that is not talked about, but they were priestesses of those traditions. And those were uh, the Murafor tradition, which is what I was tapping into um, years ago when I started working with my aura mist and the sacred and the sprays that I took to Quest and you guys liked them. So that was the first spray I made was the black tourmaline. And then after that, I continued to work with the frequency of Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, and I was guided to discover this ancient tradition of women bearing myrrh. And Mary Magdalene was a part of that, and a lot of the Essene women, when they reached a certain age, were sent to the temples of Egypt to learn these traditions. They're, they used them in mummification back in the ancient Egyptian times where they preserved the body with different aromatic gums like cedar or myrrh um, before the bodies were mummified. And that uh, was antimicrobial, so it kept the body from decaying as fast. But that tradition grew from celestial medicine. And it's different than the aromatherapy that we are all familiar with that we put in our diffusers. So not to get the two confused, the essential oils that we use now in diffusers that we combine are basically aromatic and they um, affect our olfactory senses versus the sacred oils, which the only thing they have in common is that they're essential oils. But these ancient oils are a practice that is different. Um, Their roots are based in shamanic magic and ritual practice, which enables our guides and our power animals to guide us during these ceremonies. And the smell of the oils is just like an elemental deva in a flower. These oils have their own devas as well. And they just smelling it brings back these memories especially if you have a resonance with this um, and you're attracted to frankincense, myrrh, and sandalwood and those type of um, pungent, aromatic oils, palo santo, um, they may be uh, activating you to work with them. And so this is a tradition that's been handed verbally from myrrh for tradition, you know, in, inside families and granddaughters of priestesses and daughters of priestesses, and it's a verbal tradition. So when I came across this wonderful author, Felicity Warner, who wrote a book about the sacred oils and her experience in meeting a merophore and learning the tradition with a real merophore, and then she writes about it because she says there's very little information about this, 
and the oils themselves are ready to come out into the world again, like they were 2,000 years ago during the crucifixion, during the uh, birth of Jesus when the Magi took myrrh, frankincense, and gold. All of that was for a reason, because they're esoteric oils, and they have a divine property in them. So the smell is important and valuable in the treatment of healing, and the esoteric qualities are important because the Murafors didn't use these oils for massage. There was a, the practice is sort of like a, a form of Reiki where you take the oil that the, the person needs, you put it on your hands, and you basically go around the aura of the body. And that's how Mary healed um, the disciples by doing those practices like that. And how I encountered it was in a very uh, transcendental meditation with her um, years, a, a year or two before I found the, the book about the oils. And she took me to, through a stone temple in this meditation and she showed me the mortars and the jars and the, and the oils and I know it was a download, but that for me uh, was the moment that she awakened it in me. But then when I went to Quest and I spoke to Lavendar about it, and you guys had checked out my black tourmaline spray, it was Lavendar who mentioned myrrh and frankincense. And when she did, I started researching it, and that's how I found the sacred oils. And I developed the spray that we all know as Lavendar Sacred Mist because I was inspired by her to create that combination, which is myrrh, frankincense, and gold essence that I created. And so a little bit about the karmic roots of myrrh so you can understand. Um, and this comes from the book that is uh, Felicity Warner's Sacred Oils. Myrrh is the guiding mother oil for all myrrhophores and all mistresses of the oils. It has strong karmic roots with frankincense, and both myrrh and frankincense are ruled by Saturn, which should be interesting for the astrologers. Um, also, it is one of the oils that was given to Jesus at the at the birth of Jesus, along with the frankincense. A myrrh teaches us to practice wisdom and forgiveness and to release negativity consciously in order to become fully evolved as a master or a mistress of the of the Murrafor lineage. During the temple training, a Murrafor would be rigorously observed by her elders to check that she fully embraced this philosophy within her da daily duties and worked with integrity. The message that the myrrh sends us is that we may all have material gifts in the world, but without love and forgiveness, we are nothing. And the frankincense, in the same way, has many different uh, complex levels that help us link up and repair broken energy threads that were created during past lives which have linked us to people in places that are hampering our spiritual well-being. The frankincense oil repairs soul wounds that follow on from a past life and reappear in the current life, such as addictions and obsessions. It acts as a soothing balm and is very healing for delicate and burned out energy fields. And it helps regulate the flow of uh, chi energy through the body, which is one of the main... Um, properties of the spray that I have is that it helps us align and connect and recharges the aura. And then mixing the gold in there is a stabilizer. So you have the frankincense and then you have the myrrh, which is an oil of release. And then you have the gold, which is a stabilizer. So. Wow. I had no idea they were so, um, so intrinsically linked. 
I mean, everyone's heard yes. the story of, of the Magi and the and the gifts. But I have this is I just love this. Uh, so when when um, so the the myrrh helps um, to open your your channels and, re- and release, yes. And then and the and frankincense then the fr- helps to yeah, clear the frankincense, out. frankincense, yes, helps us um, repair and and remove those uh, energy threads from people and that hamper our spiritual being. So basically past actors that come and reappear in our lives again. Or bad actors, yeah. as I call them. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I can see. I mean, you can't really... There's only so far forward or upward you can go when you still have these energetic um, shackles, balls and chains kind of uh, keeping you from achieving that truly higher level of 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 grace and and um ascension and some of us never achieve it and we pass on and that's why we have all those uh stories about the ghost being shackled and you hear the chains on around the house because the soul is shackled to the earth it, it cannot be free it didn't live a life of of connection to the higher self when it was embodied due to all this past life trauma that we kind of carry with us in our next cosmic life. It's like we got our suitcase packed (laughs) and we were bringing some stuff that we got to work on again. Um, And that's the process is to release that baggage because it's like a stamp on your spirit. And when it's like a passport, you keep traveling and stamping on that passport. Eventually it's going to get full. You're going to need a new one. Or it's going to break, which is mm. what the tears and the aura and the holes in the aura. And then we have all these crazy energies uh, around the world and people have these holes in their aura. And they come in and the imposters start to take over. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just, I, I know that, I know that energy where it's like, you know, Oh, oh, I'm your friend, and pay no attention to what I'm doing behind your back. Uh, you know, actually, you know, sometimes people get taken in. It's almost like a like a past life trickster coming through. Yes, and one yeah. of the oils that um, there's 20 sacred oils, just so you know: uh, elmi, myrtle, frankincense, sandalwood, myrrh but also spikenard. And interesting, what she says about spikenard and the karmic roots um, is this. Spikenard has karmic links with Arcturus and the Great White Brotherhood, also known as the Ascended Masters. The Great White Brotherhood is a group of immensely enlightened and powerful immortal souls whose purpose is to make every human aware of their divine nature. And many mystery schools have been developed on Earth in order to spread this teaching while avoiding the persecution that inevitably follows whenever it becomes public. Uh, Members of the Great White Brotherhood, as we know, are Yeshua and Buddha and many others. So it was interesting that there is a cosmic connection to these oils. And, of course, if the Egyptian used them and they were found in the tombs of pharaohs, uh, this is all this cosmic medicine, this celestial medicine that... Somehow we learned from the Sumerians, the Babylonians, um, and we're passed down verbally through women. It's a lineage of women. Well, that that makes sense. So um, both Mary Magdalene, um, Yeshua, you know, the Virgin Mary, her mother, and I mean, all all of these all the Mary beings. Ma- the, all the Marys. So everyone who had the name Mary was a myrrh for. That's why there were so many Marys in the Bible. Because that was basically like your confirmation name when you graduated from this tutelage that you learned. And that's what the women did back then is they healed with these ointments and these oils and resins. And that's how when Jesus was in the tomb, 
what they used was frankincense, myrrh, and spikenard. So they were using a, an oil that has a connection to the Great White Brotherhood of which Jesus was a part of. Wow. Yeah, so, and I, I just, I remember um, uh, Lavendar uh, uh, told me that it took 500 years of preparing that Essene bloodline before before it culminated in Yeshua and Mary Magdalene and you know Virgin Mary that was like kind of like the the uh the goal of yes, 500 the years Essene, and the Essene children had their star charts prepared at birth so that they would know what areas of strength they had and what areas they had to work on because all of the Essenes 500 years before, up until the time of the crucifixion, like she said, were preparing the generations before Christ to prepare for that time. But at that moment of the crucifixion, and this you can, um, this was channeled in the book, The Essenes, Children of the Light by Joanna Wilson, where she was sort of like Dolores Cannon and she had um, patients and she did hypnotherapy and a lot of them started revealing that they came, they had a lifetime in the Essenes and they, she started connecting the community of the Essenes through these clients that had, similar to Dolores Cannon, who also has a book on Yeshua and the Essenes. Um, and in this information, uh, the gentleman who was speaking, I believe, was one of the apostles and he mentions how during the time of the crucifixion, all of the communities from Qumran, the three major Essene communities that formed a pyramid, all of their energy during that time was focused on Yeshua to help him do what he was supposed to do, which was basically remove the soul from the body, stay there, and hold them there to be able to then bring it back in when he goes in the tomb. So basically, they were life support for him. And all of these things got together in meditation and did their energy healing from distance, from long distance, from where they were to Yeshua in, during the crucifixion. So it's an amazing book that reveals a lot of those, um, those secrets that, you know, have been hidden from us. Wow. So... I know that Mary Magdalene and Yeshua both are very active, you know, today, right now. It's it's not, um, I mean, just because their physical bodies are gone, their work has continued. And um, especially, you know, with with the healing, um, you know, as as we uh, do the, you know, the the star seed readings. The what we call the Jesus or Yeshua and Mary Magdalene soul group, there are certain markings that identify a chart as being connected, and it's really but the, this group is all about healing. So, bringing that um, you know the Mary Magdalene essence in is especially important uh, for not only healing yourself but for people that that work uh you know as you do in helping to heal other people um bringing that essence of Mary Magdalene is is a very powerful thing so you have developed that flower essence for for doing just that and what do you call it Oh, that is the the Magnolia de Magdalene. So in the previous show, uh, we spoke a lot about the Magnolia de Yeshua, which was a Magnolia essence I created in the summer solstice. And then a month later, in July, which was the Ascension Feast Day of Mary Magdalene, the 22nd, on the 22nd at midnight, so right past midnight, uh, there was a full moon. I was very restless. And I kind of just get this uh, bubbling inside of my heart and my solar plexus and I get visions. And I received a vision of the magnolia tree at night um, with the moonlight. And I felt her energy. 
And that picture that you have up on the website for the advertisement for the show depicts exactly that frequency that I was that I was feeling and that image that I saw, basically her shadow in her cloak, her magenta cloak. Um, and basically she's telling me we're making this essence tonight in the moonlight. So the Magnolia the Yesho was made infused in a solar infusion, whereas the Magnolia... Uh, the Magdalene is created in the moonlight on the on the uh, night of her Ascension feast day. And when I went out into the dark backyard to cut the flower from the tree, <clears throat> in the dark, mind you, barefoot, <laughs> and I don't know how I did that with all the snakes in Florida, um, I pulled the flower and brought it back in to put it in the bowl and set it out into the moonlight, and there was a red spider on it, and a little one. And the red spider is the messenger of the goddess. So it was basically her there. For me, it was her. I mean, she's not going to physically appear, so she appears through these symbols that we have. Um, and I sat in meditation that night, and... Uh, She gave me a message of peace, and I felt that power of the moonlight that night infusing the flower and the water. And the next day after I created the essence, I had a meditation with both Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, and a huge portal of light appeared, and the three of us walked through it. And so for me, that means that this essence is an essence of initiation. It's an essence that um, helps us bring into our physical world those 5D frequencies. And when I say 5D frequency, for me, that's the frequency of nature, that we connect daily to nature, to the sun, to the trees, to the birds, to the animals, that the messages we receive in our daily lives come through signs and symbols of nature, whether it's a flower or you see a an armadillo go by your front yard like I did today, and I look up the spiritual meaning of the armadillo, and for me, that's a sign from above. That's a sign from them. Um, they can't come in and talk to us all the time, so they send us these little crumbs that keep us going because there are personal experiences. And when you're thinking about something and all of a sudden it appears in front of you in the physical, it's like, wow, you know, how do you explain that to people? And <laughs> these essences are magical to the point where I have my friends calling me and or I call them or they got an essence or they're trying it or they come over with the intention of getting one thing and they leave with something completely different because they have a mind of their own. And sometimes people purchase my essences for others, for Christmas or whatnot, and it's the correct address on the box, but the box will never make it to its destination. It'll come back around. And by that time, it's past Christmas, and they don't want it anymore, so I refund them, but that happened twice. And the message I get when that happens is because whoever they were sending it to wasn't ready to feel this yet, and... You know, when you're not ready, you're not ready. So the essences have a life of their own, literally. I I just start to explain. But once you bring in that 5D frequency and those higher frequency of unconditional love for yourself, not for someone else, but for you, loving you and loving who you were in the past and all of your experiences and instead of holding that resentment, being able to rationalize and acknowledge consciously that they were learning lessons for us. They weren't meant to hurt us, and no one's out to get us. We sabotage ourselves. So these essences help us stop those loops, help us with psychic attacks from other people, from trauma from birth, and it's all just flowers, and it's the vibration of the flowers, so it's not even... Um, medicinal it's just the energy of it and we're living in an energetic world so of course we're going to need energetic healing remedies to help us through uh, what I call the the earth changes and the astrology and the eclipses that come in and the full moons and how it affects us 
yeah, you know, and and the effects can be so subtle that you ju- you know that something is off, but you don't know how or why or what to do about it. Um, and those are the things where I think the essences would be really powerful when you, you can't figure out what's going on. Um, and that's when a person would want to do a consultation with you and then you can tell them what they what they uh need to you know break through this and continue their evolution exactly because we get yeah. stuck there's certain times where we're just stuck and and i I still experience it, and I live with the essences. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we all have our bio rhythms change, you know, um, and our our circumstances and the people that surround us uh, affect us. And we can't always have that wall up and that protection and we can't always hermit ourselves and be in our sacred space. We need to go out into the world and uh, be able to walk in that net neutrality and non-judgment and just um, be who we are and be free. I can walk around now and I'm me, and if you don't like me, well, you can keep walking. Maybe I'm not your (laughs) cup of tea. I may not be your cup of tea today, but maybe next year I'm your cup of tea, or vice versa. You know, we all have that. Um, But why not, why always live with that, you know, paranoia or or worried that the same thing's going to happen to us again because it happened to us three times already? You know, there's a way out of it. And these are the tools that the Ascended Masters, the Great White Brotherhood, our Cosmic Family, the Elemental Kingdom, the Mineral Kingdom, they're all here like, hey, hi, I'm here for you. I can help you. (laughs) Look this way. And I think there is some type of awakening happening where people are starting to get the message or perhaps hear the call, that inner call that guides them like I was guided to you guys at Starseed Hotline and how others were and how I was guided to do the essences or the sacred oils. It's that inner knowing that you have to trust. You have to trust you first before you start trusting other people around you. Um, And that's hard because there's too much noise going on. Yeah, Yeah, that's a a good point. Um, So... What would you recommend for someone who wants to um, really bring their higher self energy more into their current life? There's many essences. I, my my first one would be the gold essence because the the gold essence. Um, stimulates the person the person to seek contact and communication with the higher aspects of yourself. We have to want that communication and not be like have our reptilian brain says, "Oh yeah, that's that's BS, you know, that's not going to happen." You know, that's that ego talking. So once you differentiate the ego and you shut it up and the best way to do it, which I say all the time to everybody, breathing exercises Breathing exercises slow the mind, and the mind doesn't want to be slow. It wants to distract you and and make you get all squirrely. When you control your breathing, you control the mind. And when you control the mind, you can focus and you have clarity. So breathing is very important for the body in many ways. And breathing for five minutes in the morning, grabbing your essence bottle, holding it in your hand and asking your higher self, is this what I need today? And how many drops? And you'll you'll get the message. And it's not your imagination. It is your inner knowing. It's that inner compass, that GPS that we have that says, yeah, do that, don't do that. You know how it feels. And then we say, oh, I should have listened because look what happened. And you have to still the mind to hear those messages, to hear those um, downloads and play them and be able, we get all these downloads, but when do we play them? It's like a computer, you download everything, but when do you have time to sit and play the the program? We have to play our programs. 
or we get a bottleneck in our crown chakra, and then we get migraines and headaches and insomnia, and then everything starts. So a lot of physical ailments are linked to the stagnant energy or the, you know, the, the stopping of the, of the chakra spin, which happens with gluten. That's why gluten, glued in, is what I say with gluten. You're glued in when you have all that molasses around you. Um, smoking cigarettes is another thing that, that stops the, the chakras from spinning. Um, Say that all again? Of those pol- all, all of those pollutants, cigarettes. Oh, pollutants, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, any pollutant like cigarettes or anything that we're putting in our body that it, it kind of is like a, it stops them and we get stagnant and it's just a, a never-ending cycle. Yeah. So um, what about uh, people that are dealing with, like, depression, anxiety, or loss? There's a lot of trauma uh, remedies, so emergency remedies, we call them. Bach has a a great emergency remedy. Um, And they're basically flowers that are soothing. So we have the Rescue Me remedy which is a a combination of seven flowers. Each of the seven flowers, yellow rose, pear, star of Bethlehem, peace rose, seed well, cherry plum, bottle brush, all of those flowers have properties that help with trauma, PTSD, anxiety, uh, past life trauma. Um, The star of Bethlehem for me is, is one of the most, Powerful, and it reminds me of the TX11 when we used to call it the Star of Bethlehem, uh, because it's like an eraser of trauma. Um, so if you need that, and you want to, and you're ready to to feel, because you have to transmute that, and you have to feel that pain, and then let it go. So the flower just holds you while you're going through that that emotional stress and. It comforts you during the process so you're not doing it alone. Um, so it sounds like it's a, it's rough, but it's really not. And before you know it, you're waking up in the morning and you're singing in the shower. And so, and you don't know why. Yeah. You feel so good. And it's like, wow, yeah. <laughs> why, why do I feel great? What's wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. And we forget what it feels like to be joyful. We forget what it feels like to feel like that little girl or that little boy that wanted to kick ball or pick flowers in the garden. And it brings back that little, you know, each essence has its own way of bringing back that that inner joy so that we can feel happy inside. And when we're happy inside, it's kind of like contagious and everyone around is happy too. So... It's, and the sprays, of course, I spray my Mary Magdalene spray when I'm going to have guests because it's a big heart opener. Um, you can feel it when you spray it. It's a heart chakra activator, and it just opens up that heart chakra where you can even breathe better. Your lung capacity increases because of everything we're always holding in our heart, and it's kind of like squeezed in there. And you just get a few sprays of uh, that spray, which has the magnolia, the magdalene. It has celestite, which brings in angelic energies. It has pink quartz, which seals our aura and that pink crystalline energy. And it has Athena crystal, which is very powerful. All the sprays have the Athena crystal essence in it. She's asked to be a part of all of them at this time. And... You spray that around your space or you put the combination in a diffuser and it changes the environment and when people walk in, they feel it and they kind of let their shoulders down a little bit and they're not walking in with that baggage. Oh, that's good. That's good. And then what would you uh, recommend for the uh, people that think they might be under psychic (laughs) attack? Well, we have different levels of psychic attacks. So if you want um, something that dissipates fears, um, that assists with emotions related to anxiety, 
that surrounds you with light healing energies, protects you from psychic attacks or deep fairy hurts, grounding, protecting. I, my go-to is the red mistletoe, which is an Argentine essence. That's like level one. And then um, we can go into a level two essence, which for me would be fringe drew, which I'm actually taking myself right now. And I love the way this essence feels. It's brand new. I just got it in the shop a couple weeks ago from Argentina. And this one, Fringed Rue, helps you release old patterns and habits, including addictions, provides psychic and spiritual protection, especially from psychic attacks, protects you from anyone trying to absorb your energy, whether consciously or unconsciously, assists you in relaxing your nervous system, Great essence for insomnia. Energizes and strengthens you on an emotional level. And a beautiful aura cleanser. And if you make a spray out of it, it's a space clearing and a declutter. So I started taking that this week and I love it. It's just um, blocking all that, you know, the, the, everything we're seeing on the news and on TV and all the collective stuff and I'm just like I see it but I don't want to be a part of that um, so I'm taking that one now and then we can go a little bit deeper and this is um, a different range of flowers this is the flowers of St. Germain which is a range from Brazil and I use these flowers for some heavy-duty psychic attacks um, for my clients. I'll make a, a custom spray with this flower, which is Alium. And Alium is my go-to for unwanted guests. It brings potent protection to the attacks of the astral psychic forces and consequent vampirism. So it's a powerful dispossessor. Um, so it's basically like an exorcism. Um, it wow. restores calm, discernment, acts uh, physical and psych it helps with physical and psychic exhaustion from all the psychic attacks. We get psychically exhausted and physically exhausted. Insomnia helps with hypochondria. Uh, it helps against unwanted guests, nullifying evil eye. Uh, floral protection against those energetic vampire energies that attach themselves to you. Um, evil eye and uh, undoes um, enchantments and hexes as well. So that's wow. uh, that's heavy duty. Um, beautiful flower. I love it. And then uh, last but not least, the flowers of Saint Germain from Brazil. Uh, the creator was inspired to create this line 40 years ago through the uh, tutelage of Archangel Michael. So she has a flower called Archangel Michael, and that flower contains the power to undo sorcery works, neutralizes negative energy, and has the power to release supraphysical bodies trapped or chained in sublevels of the astral plane. So ghosts, if you have any in your house that are negative, um, it also reinforces the determination to fulfill your mission and your purpose and allows nothing to stand in your way of your divine blueprint. And, of course, it has the presence of the protector, Archangel Michael, with his shield. And what did he do? You have the image of Michael stepping on the devil's head with his sword. So that's exactly what this essence helps you battle with. Wow. Wow, it's it's just remarkably power, powerful stuff, and I know that your essences have helped me a lot um, in you know various times for various reasons. So um, now you just you have a YouTube channel. How do people yes, find that? At Starseed Essences eighty forty four, um, and or you could just look up Starseed Essences. You'll see the logo. And, uh, yeah, we've been doing a lot more of that um, with a lot of people are asking for different things, more meditations, and um, it's something I've done in, in my private groups, the meditations. So now I'm putting them out there to the, into the, the world to see. 
And a lot of more information on the essences. I'm, I'm going to do specials on all the different ranges, and I'd like to do one on psychic attacks because it's been a popular theme the last few weeks is I'm getting a lot of calls of people needing these remedies to help with uh, gang stalking, psychic attacks, bullying, um, energies that even children are experiencing these negativities as well. Wow. So, yeah, and I, by the way, I, I love your new logo. The, you know, oh, it's, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like the a star in a triangle with a spaceship on it. Well, um, there's a story behind the logo. Do we have time? Uh, yeah, we we got a, a couple minutes. Yeah. Well, real quick, um, I had an aunt who was a transmedium uh, paranormal intuitive, and she used to send me letters when I was young and going growing up and whatnot in my 20s, and she always sent me channeled messages. And in one of the letters, she said that there is a being that puts a blue light on me, and, and it's... Um, not you know it's a higher being a galactic being and he wants me to know our symbol so that i could recognize him when he communicates with me through the symbol and that is a partial part of of what my symbol is so i believe it's my star symbol from my star family um and they wanted me to know what it was and that letter was from 1994 so I've been hanging on to it for a while, and here we are now. It's finally flourished as the logo for my website. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's got layers and layers. Mm-hmm. So, And on your website, if people wanted to, uh, to just go and see all the things that you offer, um, that would be Starseed Essence Shop, S-H-O-P-P-E, dot com. And if they yes. put that in, you know, in YouTube... You can get, you can find Sandra's videos as well, and the links are on the website as well. And some of the videos are uploaded there as well. Um, not the most recent ones. And also, I'm doing a special in honor of Mary Magdalene's uh, feast day and Ascension Day, July 22nd, which was yesterday. Uh, we had a special on the YouTube video, but now we have a special for those of you listening tonight. The code word is Starseed and that's for 35% off, and that's good always. So it's always for the star seeds here uh, to be able to use that code. Oh, that's excellent. That's a huge discount. So thank you so much for doing that for our star seed uh, community at large. And uh, it's just been wonderful getting to chat with you again. And always wonderful to to speak with you and to see you when when I'm seeing you at the Quest. So thank you so much for being with us tonight, Sandra. Thank you, Ariel, and thank you, everyone. Keep shining. Good advice. Good advice. Keep shining and keep spraying. (laughs) (laughs) Essence responsibly, I say. (laughs) Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, and um, that is it for us tonight. We'll be back in two weeks, and until that time, remember to hold gratitude in your heart and show compassion instead of judgment. Good night, everyone. been listening to Starseed Radio Academy. Visit our website at www.starseedhotline.com.